Workplace fatalities have been on the rise, with 31 so far this year, the most over the same period since 2016. In Parliament yesterday, the Manpower Ministry announced new measures to prevent such occurrences. And I speak with Senior Minister of State for Manpower, Zaki Mohammed, on what's being done to improve safety for workers. Many of the fatalities and workplace injuries occurred due to basic safety lapses such as you know, inadequate control measures and lack of compliance with proper work methods. And to me, this is very worrying and you know, I would say even disturbing because you know, we need to really tackle these issues because lives are at stake. Many of these accidents could have been prevented with basic safety precautions. Now, if you look at the 31 fatalities this year, seven involved falling from heights, making it the top cause for fatalities this year. So give you one example. A worker was preparing for cleaning works on the rooftop of a factory when he fell through a skylight and landed 9.5 meters below on the factory floor. So he was not wearing any fall arrest equipment despite being tasked to work on the roof. Now that's, I think, quite very, that's very clear cut. In another instance, a renovation company owner, a company owner fell through a fall ceiling board and landed about four meters below. So if you look at both you know, um, situations, there were clearly poor control measures and a lack of basic safety precautions that suggest that you know, the companies did not take you know, safety seriously. Risk assessments were not done, proper equipment were not used, and measures were not taken on site. And as you can see, just like uh, Mr. Tan Si Leng said, you know, these workers or even the company director were all you know, experienced folks. They are not new to workplace safety or the environment. So this is why we are rolling out measures that will compel company senior management to, be, to take workplace safety and health more seriously. And I think this is where uh, I spoke last night at the adjournment motion that we will introduce the approved code of practice or ACOP for company directors, workplace safety and health duties, which will be gazetting later this year. And this, um, you know, will make sure and with ACOP, I think corporate leaders and board of directors will be guided in their workplace safety and health responsibilities. So this, you know, in the event of a wish act offence, the courts will consider the ACOP when assessing the capability of company leaders and its board. And they can and will be prosecuted if found to be culpable for safety lapses. So I think we are putting a lot more um, measures in place to make sure that companies are aligned with what needs to be done for workplace safety. In addition, you know, we're talking about how we will disqualify unsafe firms from public sector projects. So if a company has a poor safety track record, they will be barred from public sector projects for a period of time. At the same time, we'll also be reviewing the demerit point system to ensure that it's effective in penalizing firms for safety breaches. So unsafe uh, contractors that accumulate many points can be debarred from employing work permit holders for a period of time. So, Mr. Mazaki, there seems to be a rush to complete projects delayed by the pandemic. How will this affect the safety of the workers? And we understand, as you mentioned, that MOM is looking to take a preemptive stance against these workplace-related deaths and injuries. So, what are some other preventative measures that the ministry is looking to take or considering in the near future, particularly in this, in what seems to be a rush to complete projects? Well, I would say this. The safety and health of workers must take precedence over the completion of projects. I can empathize with employers whose projects or commitments are delayed due to the pandemic. However, we're going to ask ourselves, right, how much is a life worth? How much is your hand, thumb, foot, you know, a limb worth? So we have a duty of care for our workers. So I can assure you that workplace accidents will result in even more severe project delays and there will be consequences to those who are negligent. But there has to be a balance between business interests and the safety of our workers. So the Ministry of Manpower is looking at upstream measures to strengthen companies' uh, workplace safety and health ownership, how we can help raise awareness on workplace safety and health, and help companies build capabilities to manage you know, safety risks so that more companies want to be equipped to do it, to do it well, and then certainly you know, do more for workplace safety. So as I mentioned, you know, we need to strengthen top management's commitment to improve workplace safety and health because they set the culture, they set the tone, and they allocate resources within the company to shape the practices on the ground. But we also want to help build companies' capabilities to manage their own workplace safety risks. So we are considering institutionalizing a few things, such as pre-start assessments to identify danger spots, such as especially for potentially hazardous work conditions, so that companies can put in place appropriate and timely protections and implement safety measures. 
So for example, companies can hold you know, weekly site coordination meetings to allow for coordination of works to be carried out by different subcontractors and eliminate incompatible works. They can also supplement this practice with uh, daily toolbox meetings by various work teams to allow for work hazards, control measures and precautions you know, to, be, to be shared with workers prior to the commencement of work. So we are also reviewing the coverage of uh, WSH personnel such as WSH auditors, officers and coordinators to improve the levels of WSH oversight and champion good workplace safety practices on the ground. But beyond WSH personnel, we encourage companies to leverage technology to detect and prevent workplace accidents. And such technologies can help companies monitor the conditions and practices at workplace more closely, such as installing surveillance cameras at strategic high-risk locations. So in doing so, we may help overcome manpower constraint of site supervision, especially if systems are equipped with uh, video analytics that can provide alerts on unsafe situations, such as when a worker enters a zone that he is not allowed to. So we are therefore considering requiring CCTVs or other means of surveillance to be installed on site in the future. So watch for this, more details will be announced shortly. So you've mentioned that the fact that deaths and injuries occur to be quite disturbing, but how do you think Singapore can take active steps to protect workers? It's not just the government and the companies who are responsible, right? What can the various other parties, such as consumers even, or dormitory managers, what can they do to supplement what the government is working on and what the companies are expected to do? Well, certainly, you know, this is a whole of uh, society effort. You know, it's not just the companies, but all of us, you know, play an important role. Um, I've, we've had feedback as well coming from members of the public when they see unsafe working conditions too um, in the vicinity, even, you know, for foreign domestic workers, for example, cleaning, you know, uh, windows or high-rise uh, situations. So these are, you know, part and parcel of how I think the public can play an important role. But of course, you know, while inspections and enforcement form a key part of our efforts, I think we are we we, we have to supplement, you know, some of these efforts, you know, whether because we, we do, you know, a lot more enforcements these days, especially for high risk workplaces, as well as uh, those with poor workplace safety and health performance. So, you know, we, we don't want just to go around putting fines on companies or people. But I think it's important to frame education and awareness, but at the same time complement it with uh, how you know, we can get members of the public, uh, members of the you know, workforce, um, the union leaders, for example, and, um, and even management to do more ground checks on the ground engagement so that we can all keep our, make our company safe. So I think this is a really a collaborative effort for all. And at the same time, I think um, you know, on the part of whistleblowers, you know, we just want to assure them as well that uh, you know, all information given to us are kept confidential. The identities are kept confidential because under the WISH Act as well, employers cannot dismiss or threaten workers who have reported WSH issues. And certainly MOM will protect them and take enforcement actions against those who you know, go against this. So ultimately, you know, there is some level of protection for whistleblowers, but uh, we need you know, all, uh, all parts of the community, including industry stakeholders to play their part you know, and go upstream hopefully identify many of these um, risk areas beforehand up front so that we can prevent you know, accidents you know, uh, downstream and certainly uh, keep the workers, workplaces safe and our workers safe. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos.